Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel I read poetry, mostly work by contemporary poets, occasionally poems of my own, and once in a while poems from the past. Today's poem comes to us from Meg Day from her collection Last Psalm at Sea Level, published by Barrow Street Press in 2014. Uh, this poem is entitled To My Student, who asks, Since when does a bunch of normal people standing around actually change anything? I say, you're right. When she spoke at my junior high trip to San Francisco, she was specific about the seat, how she refused to stand fifth row on the right, bus 2857, lucky window spot freed up when another passenger moved on back as asked. Eighteen blocks from that auditorium, the loins tender hold of Jean Compton's cafeteria now sways, gentle-hipped in its newest incarnation, a leaning SRO. All kinds of folks still crowding the curb with cigarettes and strings of single syllables for those whose stares linger too long. It's true, I think. They are rarely just standing around. The few who sat drinking Woolworth's coffee at Greensboro, the four million who walked out after Kent State, the solid week of fists in the air at Gala Debt. The burning scarecrow, the news stations that invested suddenly in closed captioning. How did it happen that you have the entire world at your fingertips and know nothing of the lineage on which Wall Street tents are pitched? How exactly do you think change comes about? We stand, like the 200,000 that remained in place for 17 minutes of one man's dream like the planted feet of every human chain outside of every Planned Parenthood, like the rows upon rows of bodies stomping dust in Arizona, a solid wall between the flashing lights and the random bend of the border, like today in Oakland, when a young black man stretched out his hand to a row of white riot shields, every gun tipped with petals, there is a reason we stand in ovation. There is reason we stand for something. There is a reason we stand up. Do not stand back. Stand in solidarity and do not cross that picket line. Young man, you have no idea what's coming. And that was to my student who asks, since when does a bunch of normal people standing around actually change anything? Meg Day, Last Psalm at Sea Level, Barrow Street Press, 2014. If you enjoyed this reading and this poem, please do check out the description of the video for more information about Meg Day and more information about where to purchase a copy of this book um, for yourself from the press. Uh, also included in that description is a list of other projects I'm currently working on and more information about me and the other, well, basically me and the other projects I do. Um, I hope, uh, I hope you are enjoying this series and if you are consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell icon, you'll be notified every time there's a new video, which is every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And also consider liking these videos, commenting below or sharing them on social media. All these things help uh, spread the word about these poets and these poems and hopefully draws more attention and, uh, more well, I would just say more attention and opportunity to these poets and these poems. Um, a lot of times we know these poets, sometimes we don't. And I think uh, the opportunity to experience someone else's work and hear it uh, spoken aloud, hopefully given some sort of a life, um, can be just that little nudge we need into thinking about and experiencing the world through someone else's eyes and, uh, and discovering that anew. So I'm grateful for the power of poetry to do this, to create these, these spaces, these opportunities for us to have empathy one for another, to imagine the world in a bigger, brighter way, um, to connect on some deep human level um, across distance and time and come to a deeper understanding of these core essential human experiences that we all have, um, whether they're joyful or they're they're filled with grief or anger or happiness. I'm thankful that we have the opportunity to, for a moment, step in through language into that space of someone else's life and someone else's um, vision. So here's to all of you who are writers, uh, especially here at the end of the year. 
wishing you all the very best in your own creative journeys, in your own efforts to write, to imagine, to describe, and uh, hoping that uh, we will see plenty of your work in the near future um, as you continue your journeys and I continue mine. I'm thankful for all of you who support this channel in small ways and large ways. I'm grateful that I'm not just speaking to an empty room. Uh, <laughs> I'm thankful that we are here uh, at the end of 21, 2021 as we're heading into 2022 and more unknowns and more uncertainty that one thing that we, we do have for certain is the ability to have these conversations, the ability to turn to art, music, and literature, be inspired, uh, to be connected. And I'm thankful for all of you who are part of that greater conversation, um, whatever you're doing and however you converse and however you add to the conversation, I'm thankful that we're here together in this moment, in this time. So until next time, wishing you all the best um, in the new year. I think we'll have maybe one or two more episodes before the new year wraps up, but, uh, or this year wraps up and the new year begins. But uh, I'm thankful that we're, we're here doing this together and I wish you all the very best and we'll be back again soon. Um, take care and keep on reading and writing, keep on creating work and building those bridges um, so that we can find each other and uh, communicate with each other and find joy in the beauty of the word. And uh, until next time, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> until next time, we'll see you again soon. Bye.